Hi, I'm Ubanga and I'm developing a game where you build a town on a tiny planet that can be played in VR. For the past 10 or so years, I've been interested in making games. I learned myself how to program, how to do 3D modeling in Blender, and how to work with the Unity Editor. I've made dozens of little prototypes, where I explored topics and themes such as space, procedural generation, and cooperative play. And although most of my projects were far too ambitious to ever see the light of day, I've managed to finish a couple of small arcade games. At some point, I would like to do another video where I talk about my journey in game development and show off a little bit more of these games and prototypes that I made throughout the years. Let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. Anyway, I never got around to making and releasing an actual full game, but this year I hope to change that. I feel that now I've got enough experience managing and finishing projects for my day job as a web developer to actually do this, and I want to take you with me on that journey. I've already got some work done, and I really like where this game is going. Every time I see my tiny world when I put my headset on, I get a big grin on my face. In the next couple of videos, I will show you what I've done so far and talk about my plans for the future. This project started when I saw Sebastian Lake's video on procedural planet generation and his solar system project. I will link to both playlists in the description below. Sebastian's videos are always super inspiring to me. In this case, I thought how awesome it would be to be like a god in VR and see this little planet floating in front of you. So I roughly followed along with Sebastian's series, but I adapted it to fit my own needs and code structure. It proved to be a great starting point for my project. Thanks, Sebastian. In one of his videos, Sebastian talks about three different ways to generate the sphere. The UV sphere, subdividing and blowing up a regular polyhedron, and the Fibonacci sphere. I considered all of these options for my project as well. I had the same problem with the UV sphere as Sebastian. All the detail ends up being around the poles, and I would like it to be more evenly divided across the surface of the planet. I tried the same method that Sebastian ended up using, of subdividing and blowing up a polyhedron, a bit like a balloon. But I ran into a bit of an issue. I would like the vertices of my planet to double as nodes for my building grid as well. But when you take this approach, you get some irregular patterns around points where three or more faces meet. So in the end, I ended up using the Fibonacci sphere method. With this method, you map the golden spiral on the surface of a sphere. When you do this, you're left with a pattern that looks a bit like a pineapple. To me, this has many benefits. The points are pretty evenly spaced apart, and you can have any number of points greater than four. Whereas with the polyhedron method, you're stuck with subdividing. Or in other words, doubling your number of vertices each time. The problem with the Fibonacci method, however, is triangulation. And this is ultimately the reason Sebastian doesn't use it in his project. There are some complicated maths that involves projecting all the points onto an infinite plane, triangulating and then wrapping it around the sphere again. But luckily, I found an excellent implementation of the convex hull algorithm by Oscar Sigurdsson on their GitHub. And I made sure to structure my code in a way that I could always swap it for a different solution if I might need it. The algorithm is a bit slow at the moment, taking a couple of seconds to run for my biggest planet size, but it only gets called once per game when the world is generated. So I would say it's fine for now. It's my understanding that it's best practice to split bigger meshes into smaller sub-meshes. This way Unity doesn't have to render the whole mesh. However, I found this not to be the case for me. The higher number of draw calls that you get from splitting meshes had a bigger impact on my frame rate than rendering more vertices. So I left it out for now. My method might be useful for somebody else though, so I will show you what I did. I generated the new Fibonacci sphere, with the number of points being the number of submeshes that I want to have, and give each point an index. Then, for each triangle in my mesh, I find the center point, and find out which point in the new Fibonacci sphere is closest to it. I then simply add the triangle to the submesh array with the index of the Fibonacci point. I 
I use Sebastian's method of layering noise to generate elevations in the terrain. Basically, we take some rough 3D noise for the big features and layer increasingly finer and less intense noise on top of that for smaller and smaller features. Then I offset each vertex based on the noise value for that point in space. The layered noise gives me a value between 0 and 1. If the value is lower than 0.5, it gets moved towards the center of the planet. And if it's greater than that, it gets moved outwards. I created four different biomes based on the latitude and blended them using some noise. They are the poles, the forests, the plains and the desert. The color of the planet is based on elevation. Each biome has a gradient going from sea level all the way to its highest point. I created the node object for each vertex in the mesh and used it to store the biome, the elevation and add a collider. This will help me when I start placing stuff, like trees and buildings. I also grabbed a list of neighboring nodes for each node by looking at which vertices are connected in the mesh. This will come in handy when I add terrain manipulation and pathfinding for our villagers. For the water, I added a gradient to the terrain mesh that colors everything below sea level blue. I then added a copy of the terrain mesh without the elevation and made it slightly transparent. As I don't have the actual UVs of the generated sphere, I cannot use textures. So I created the water shader based around the custom shader graph node that generates Voronoi noise in 3D space. It looks alright, but it's not very performant at the moment. I suspect it's because of the liberal use of sinus functions. But it works for now, so I will come back at a later time. I also added some edge detection to give the impression of waves where water meets other meshes like the terrain, boats or the player's hands. I created some trees in Blender of different sorts and sizes and a script to spawn them in different densities depending on the biome. To give them a bit of variation, I gave them a random rotation and scale. With all of them being the same color, it's a bit bland. So I pick a random color between two values and set it using material block properties. This should be pretty performant and in my opinion adds a lot of value. To create a simple atmosphere, I added a very slow moving particle system with a cloud texture. I want it to be in front of trees in the distance to create depth, but I don't want it to obfuscate the surface of the planet itself. So I had to mess with the render order in the universal render pipeline settings using the render objects feature. I wrote a shader for the skybox that blends between four colors. It gives this cool space effect. I created a sprite for the stars that I then randomly spawn on a unit sphere and multiply by a random range. I gave them a random scale and used the same property block method as with the trees to give them a random color. The sun is just a huge sphere with an emissive material. I added the directional light and created a script to make it rotate around the world to create a day and night cycle. Finally, I added some post-processing to bring it all together. And there you have it. That's how I created the system to procedurally generate my planets. Please subscribe if you want to stay updated on this project and don't forget to leave a like if you found this interesting. In the next episode, I will show you how I created the camera controls and how I implemented the VR capabilities. Thanks for watching.